Hello my friends, my name is Jack and today I'm going to be talking about one of the most exclusive and fascinating luxury brands in the world. This is, in my own words, Goyard. Thank you for being here. My name is Jack and I am just a kid from Indiana who cares a lot about fashion and has tried to soak up all of the information about fashion and every nook and cranny of it in the last seven years of my life. That in no way makes me qualified to say any of the things that I'm going to say today, but this is just something that I wanted to share with you, so thank you for being along for the ride. This video is not going to be a history of Goyard. If you're interested in that, uh, Goyard's official YouTube channel has a video on their very long and very rich history. Um, <clears throat> today I'm going to be talking about what makes Goyard desirable for most people and myself and what makes it so fascinating enough that I felt the need to make a video on it. Goyard is among the hardest to obtain luxury brands in the world. In the modern era, there are very few luxury brands that don't sell online in any capacity, that you can only get their products in store or through kind of a personal shopper or on the secondary market. If you want brand new Goyard just straight from the source, the best and easiest way is to go to one of their stores. However, in the US there are very few stores and they're usually on the coasts or their boutiques within department stores. The closest one for me is a tiny little store in a boutique in a Neiman Marcus in Chicago. It's about the size of my kitchen. There are obviously opportunities to buy Goyards secondhand um, and places like eBay and Grailed. You can buy new Goyard there as well, but you're often going to be paying higher than retail price due to the limited and hard to get nature of these products. Even secondhand, a lot of items still fetch over retail price, which is crazy, but <clears throat> it's the way it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Third-party reshipping services are also a good way to get Goyard. Um, these are kind of the personal shoppers that I mentioned earlier. So an individual will go to the store and purchase the item that you want and then ship it to you. This usually comes with a, a fee for the person going and actually buying the product and then a shipping fee as well. So pretty much no matter what, if you don't live near a store, you're going to be paying more than the retail price for brand new Goyard, which a lot of prices of Goyard start very, very high. I believe the cheapest leather good item that they have is a card holder. Um, so yeah, it's tough. It's tough to get it. You're gonna be paying probably more than you would like, but for such a brand that has this kind of reputation and this kind of history behind it, I think you would find that a lot of these products are worth the money and the craftsmanship and the history that they have behind them. This is the main reason I believe that Goyard is valuable uh, and desirable for people. Um, you kind of enter this exclusive in the know club when you own Goyard because of the majority of people's inability to get it. Um, it's also just a relatively unknown brand. There are more niche luxury brands, sure, but I think Goyard is kind of the entry-level unknown luxury brand for a lot of people. So it is something that you would kind of have to go out of your way to find or that you would kind of stumble across by accident, I think. Um, there are several other luxury brands that have this kind of club exclusive mentality. I will be making a video on those later, but that I think is what makes it most desirable is you kind of are granted entry into this club of people that are able to get these high value, rather rare items. And beyond that, I think the pattern, the Goyard pattern is very unique uh, and it's very visually pleasing. I like it more so than like the Louis Vuitton and Gucci and Fendi monograms and even the new Versace monogram, which I actually like very much. I still think Goyard is one of the more visually appealing ones of those and it looks nice as an all over print and doesn't look gaudy or tacky if it's plastered on everything. Um, another visually appealing part of Goyard is all of the colors that every item comes in. So it's all the same kind of monogram canvas, but there are 11 different colors um, that most Goyard items come in, and if a store doesn't have a certain color, you can just order it. Um, so there are two classic colors 
There's the black Goyardine canvas with black leather trim and um, like a natural colored leather trim, like a tan. Uh, and then there's nine specialty colors. My personal favorite is the green, as you saw with that card holder. Um, but I'm also a big fan of the Bordeaux and the orange as well. Um, I think this kind of playfulness that comes with having all of these colors is something that is very attractive for a lot of customers and gives you plenty of options to have something cool and unique. Save for custom orders from VIP clients, there have been more colors available in the past. Um, for example, Carl Lagerfeld used to uh, commission custom Goyard products in all kinds of colors that they didn't normally offer. He was one of their top VIP clients back in the day. Uh, he used to commission all kinds of custom products for his cat, actually, in an array of colors. And I, it's because of that influence that Goyard still makes a lot of products for pets today. You can find a lot of them on their website. Uh, they make everything from bowls to leashes to collars and little trunks to carry all of those things in for your pets and dog carriers as well. That's a pretty new item that they uh, have just kind of revitalized this season. Like many other luxury Accessory companies in the modern era, Goyard got their start in trunk making as a luxury accessories company. Before that, they were a few other things when they were kind of just getting started out in the 1850s. But today, they are still making a lot of those heritage products that they started out with, and they are one of the few that still does so. Granted, Louis Vuitton and uh, those kind of companies, they still make these kind of hard-sided trunks and travel accessories, but they're custom order only for the most part. Uh, with Goyard, you can walk into a boutique or walk into a store, for instance, the one in Chicago, and there's, I think, three or four kinds of hard-sided trunks available for purchase in this tiny little store, right, like the size of my kitchen. So they still do make a lot of these heritage products, and they put a lot of emphasis on continuing to make the products that gave them the credibility that they now have in the first place. Uh, I really respect Goyard for this. Uh, I think that it's hard to stay authentic and stay relevant in the modern luxury space. Uh, brands like Louis Vuitton and Gucci and Fendi and Versace are always trying to innovate and always trying to be the next best thing, but Goyard has just been this constant uh, this kind of constant grind for the last 170 years. And I really respect them for that. And I also really respect the brand for always being family owned. Uh, they've never been owned by anyone else in the entire company's history. And to this day, it is family owned and is solely managed by the family. Um, and that's obviously very rare today, which is something that I really like and something that is really hard to do, I think. The fact that the company can survive as long as it has while still having this kind of old style business practice of A, only selling in store, B, not taking funding or backing from any outside source, and C, keeping it within the family is tough. Like it has to have been really hard. Um, but again, a lot of respect for the long history of the company and them staying true to it. I personally would absolutely love to get my hands on a hard-sided Goyard trunk or briefcase whenever I get my money up. So something else that I think is very likable about Goyard is that a lot of their products are marketed as unisex. If you go on their website, you'll see a lot of promotional materials. And even in the store when I went there, um, there's a lot of promotional materials that have both men and women styling their signature bags. Um, and all kinds of colors and all kinds of things like that. So it is cool kind of to see that a lot of these traditionally feminine products are being marketed at men and women. And then even these kind of traditionally masculine products like these briefcases and hard-sided trunks are being marketed uh, towards women as well. I especially like this as someone who used to get shit for wearing my Supreme side bags and still gets shit for wearing my Saint Laurent sac de jour. Um, so it's just cool to see that, especially when you go into a store and you can see these kind of side panels that have all these marketing materials and it's men and women, you know, carrying their signature styles. Um, and it creates a really good experience and a really good ideal to uh, try to achieve for the customers, I think. 
Also, almost everything at Goyard comes in several sizes. Um, so like I said, with their signature styles, um, Goyard doesn't make a lot of products. They make a lot of different sizes of some signature products that they will constantly have. Um, I actually like this a lot. I think I prefer it to the alternative of having like 85 different bags. You just have like 15 core ones, but then they all come in four different sizes so that the customer has an array to choose from without having an overwhelming amount of choices. Um, Goyard also makes a ton of cool little accessories and lifestyle objects that you can pair with their bags, which I also really like. They try to cater to like their customers every need. They're like tailored to the life of the ideal Goyard customer. Uh, prior to what I call the democratization of luxury in the early and mid 2010s, the ideal Goyard customer were these high level businessmen who were traveling all over the place, had a ton of meetings to go to, had a lot of stationery and writing materials, and were just very busy people in general. So Goyard tried to create this kind of one-stop shop for all of their needs. They make everything from these briefcases and backpacks and these um, like carry-alls to watch cases, desk pads, pencils and pens, pencil holders, pencil pouches, cigar holders, um, ties, belts, everything that these businessmen needed to cater to the, what they did every day for their job. And I think that that is something that not a lot of brands do. They don't try it to be like all encompassing. Um, granted, Goyard doesn't make any kind of clothes or shoes or anything like that, but in terms of the kind of stationary luggage side like that, they tried to cater to every need of that kind of businessman customer that they used to have. And much in the same way that they are still true to the products that they made a long time ago when they got started, they are still true to that kind of product set that they created today. You can still buy all of those things that I just mentioned on their site today. So that is why I like Goyard so much. And that is why I think that it's desirable for a lot of people. Uh, a, you have the kind of club aspect, and then B, you have a wide range of sizes of all of their signature bags so you can fall in love with a bag and then figure out what size best fits you and then you're not stuck with something that you don't either overutilize or underutilize. And then on top of that you have all these cool little lifestyle accessories that you can throw in your bag and you can be this Goyard customer. Um, so I personally love this brand and I you know would love it if everything that I owned was from Goyard but you know you have to be reasonable and stop somewhere, I guess. So this has been, in my own words, Goyard. Thank you once again for allowing me to ramble on about something I'm passionate about. Uh, I really appreciate you sticking with me this far. Feel free to tell me that my opinions are trash in the comments or give me your own thoughts about this brand. And I have some similar videos coming soon that I'm currently working on. So once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. And I will see you later.